The next video is on commutative and distributed properties. Uh, first, I'm going to give you the definitions and a few examples, and then I'll give you some problems. The first property is called the commutative property. The commutative property says you can change the order of addition and multiplication problems. So let me give you an example of that. So if I take this problem, 12 plus 2 plus 2, I get 16. But what if I flip the order of these? Now I have 2 plus 12 which is 14 plus 2, it also equals 16. So I changed the order of these two problems, but still got the same answer. So addition is commutative. Now let's try subtraction, multiplication, I'm sorry. So in this multiplication problem, I have 5 times 2 times 2, and I get 20. But what if I change the order? Well, I could change the order of this problem and still get the same answer. So multiplication is commutative. So the definition of commutative is you can change the order and get the same answer, right? So now I want to give you some non-examples. So division. Division and subtraction are not commutative. Let me give you some examples. If I take 16 and minus 2, I get 14. But if I have 2, I can't take away 16. That would give me a negative number, and we don't know negative numbers in, fourth, in third grade. So we can't do this problem. It's beyond the scope, and it would not give me 14. So that's why subtraction is not commutative. Let me show you an example of division. If I did this division problem right here, I would ask how many threes are in 36? So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, and then 33, 36, that would be 12. But if I switch the order of this, how many 36s are in 3? Well, you can't take 36. How many 36s are in 3? You can't make 37, 36 um, sets and divide 3 into it. So this, again, does not give me 12. So division is not commutative. Now let's go to the next property. The next property is called the distributive property. Now the distributive property means to break apart. So I could solve this problem right here by making an array and doing two groups of 12. So there's two groups, because remember with arrays, this is your row and this is your column, okay? So there's two rows and the columns are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you could do this problem by using an array like this and getting 24. But what the distributive property says is maybe you don't like to do your 12s. Maybe you like to do 10s and 2s. So the distributive property says, why don't you just break that apart? So I just broke this apart. Do you see that? And now I have the array 2 times, so this is a rows, 1, 2 rows, times the columns, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, and then plus, because I just broke this apart, so I could add these two together, which would be rows and columns. That would be two rows and two columns. So I broke these apart, and I like we, we put parentheses around things as a grouping symbol. So I'm saying this is one group, this is the other. So I know 2 times 10 is 20, plus what I broke apart, 
which is 2 times 2, which is 4, and I got 24. So the distributive property says you can just break apart a number and solve it that way, and that might make it easier for you. So I broke it apart into my 10s and my 2s, because a lot of people don't know their 12 skip counting songs. All right, next problem. So here's some examples, okay? So you might get some problems like this. One of them says, fill in the blank. So I have three times eight plus three is equal to some number times eight and some and th plus three times three. So it looks like they broke a number apart. It looks like they broke up this right here, three times 11, right? And it looks like they broke it up as, oh, look, three times eight. So they distributed the three to the eight, and then it looks like they distributed the three to the three. So let's see if that's correct. So the three to the eight, so I would put that here, and then I gave the three to the three. So I think that's it. Let's see if I get the same answer. Three times eight is 24, and three times three is nine. If I add those together, I like to put those vertically, I get 33. Now let's see if this works. This, we always add up what's in the parentheses first. It's really 3 times 8 plus 3 is 11. And then 3 times 3, I know that's 33. So that must have been correct. So I use the distributive property. I took this 11 and I broke it up into three times eight and three times three. Okay. All right, this is the next problem. It's 66 plus 24 divided by three is equal to 66 divided by three plus 24 divided by, hmm. Well, 66 divided by 3 looks like they took this 66 and just divided it by 3. See? 66 divided by 3. So that's going to leave us with this 24 here. So let me put that, maybe put a, a square around that. So now I have a 24. And what am I going to divide it by? Well, it looks like we're just splitting up breaking up these two prop, two um, numbers inside the parentheses, and we're dividing them by three. So I just think you're gonna do six, 24 and divide that by three. So I'm gonna put that here, okay? Now, all they wanted you to do was fill in the blank, and they wanted you to show that you understood that this is the distributive property. And remember that just breaks apart. That just breaks apart numbers. So I hope that helps. Um, let me give you the next problem. So the next problem is second problem. It states two students start with this problem. 100 divided by 20 divided by 5. Victoria simplifies it to 5 divided by 5. Hudson simplifies it to 100 divided by 4. Who is simplifying the expression correctly? Victoria or Hudson? Well, let's first 
try to solve this problem. Um, if we were doing this problem, we know it is division, so we know it's not commutative, so we can't switch the order in any way. So what we'd first do is say, we'd start with 100, and then we divide it by 20. Okay, so remember, whenever we're doing division, we kind of go backwards and we say how many. So how many 20s are in 100? So I can count by 20s, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So that looks like five. So it looks like if we started doing this problem, it looks like Victoria simplified the 100 divided by 20 into five also. After we did this, then we'd have to divide it by five. So we would divide it by five, and that looks exactly what Victoria got, okay? Now let's look at Hudson's. And I ran out of room here, so I'll just do it here. How would Hudson have done this? Well, it looks like Hudson ignored the 100, right? And just went straight for 20 divided by five. Now, if we did this, we'd go backwards and ask how many. How many fives are in 20? Five, 10, 15, 20, that would equal to four. And then after he did that, then he took this four and put it here. And then divided 100 divided by four. We know we can't change the order. We can't do this first and then do this because this came first. So we know that Hudson's way cannot be correct. So it must be Victoria who's correct because Victoria first did 100 divided by 20 and got five and then divided that by five. So she's the correct one. I hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.